Welcome to a new episode of Family Awareness Talk Show. Our episode today is about technology. We will have with us Professor Ronald Vihimister from California and Ms. Tanya Shofani from Lebanon. All our parents and children are busy with technology and have already been moved by the digital world. The discussion with our guest today will focus on the advantages and the disadvantages of using technology in our daily lives, especially students. Professor Old V. Himster from California, you are the academic dean and the information technology manager at the Middle East University. How would you tell us about technology and the advantage that has been brought up to us during these times? Sure. Um, no, I, what I was saying, uh, I think it's important to realize that technology allows us today to do many things which not that long ago were, would be impossible. Uh, think of how much we do daily on our smartphones. We keep our shopping list. We uh, keep our contact list. We, we can actually book tickets. We can do all kinds of things from a very small device. Things which, if you look at the movies from 60, 70 years ago, were viewed as science fiction. So it gives us great tools to do many things. But unfortunately, there's also less than desirable things happening with it. And uh, there's the flip side of it, where we find people misusing technology and getting themselves into trouble with technology rather than using it for their own benefit. They use it uh, for their own problems and I might put it even in terms of for their own perdition. Um, I think it's, it, it's important for families to realize that technology use is not value free. When you, when you are using technology, you are expressing what your values are. If you have to be constantly on your technology, what are you saying? You're saying that communicating with those who are in my phone is more important than those that are around the table. So at home, for example, phones don't come to the table. Um, you know, I like what some people have taken to doing when they go out to eat, where all the mobile phones go in the middle of the table. The first person to pick up the mobile phone pays for the meal for everybody. Uh, obviously, that creates an incentive to just let it sit. Is there something that's really that urgent that you cannot wait an hour or two? What is there that is that critical in life? We used to live with letters taking weeks to go back and forth, but now we expect to answer instantly. You know, and, and the younger generation will not even do email, they just want to do instant messaging or, 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 but they don't want to do phone calls either because that interrupts. And, and so we have to look at technology as a bigger package and we've got to think of what are we really trying to accomplish for ourselves, what's important in life? That's the critical element. It's not about the technology. Technology is a tool, not the end. What do you advise parents when they want to choose a smart tool for their children who are between four years old and eight years old? Don't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Very simple. Uh, a four to eight year old child does not need a smartphone. Uh, they don't need an iPad. Uh, the interesting thing is when we look at uh, research, it is clear that children's engagement with technology, as it gets to be a lot, winds up diminishing the child's creativity, uh, typically. And, uh, you know, I take a look at the example, Bill Gates with his own daughter. She could only spend one hour a day with technology 
strategy other than specific school assignments, whether that was playing games or watching TV or whatever else. And that enables people to do other things with their time. And at the end of the day, really, how important is that Facebook friend versus do I really have to chat forever with or text that many times to all my friends? Why don't I just get together with them and let's hang out? Um, I know at Middle East University, we had a recent uh, trip where a bunch of young people went to Jordan. And uh, because obviously they didn't have data when they first arrived, rather than spending the time on their smartphones, these are university students, they spent their time talking to one another. And they came back excited to have gotten to know each other. And the, some very good friendships were built just in a matter of three days because they couldn't spend all of their time online. And we, we wind up in a virtual world and not in the real world. So for, the, for, for children, no, why? Why do you need them to have communication abilities? Just if you look at particularly young children, countries like Sweden, if, if your two-year-old is found with a, an electronic device in their hands, the parent can be fined and could eventually even lose custody of the child. What do you advise parents who are being asked by their children to buy them a smartphone? And what is a substitute that must be given to the children who are constantly asking for a smartphone? I'll tell you what I did with my children. With smartphones, I said very simply. Uh, I said, if you want a smart, you're welcome to have a smartphone. Uh, every month I give you a small allowance, keep saving. Eventually you'll be able to buy it. Uh, I'm not going to pay for it and I'm not going to pay for your cell phone subscription either. There's Wi-Fi at home, and there's a computer at home, and there is, you know, we even see some university students who don't have smartphones. And honestly, they're often the smarter student, not the, not the weaker student. And the, the, the whole digital consumption where students are constantly on their phones winds up, they, students wind up not knowing how to sit and concentrate. So if I give them a 10 page document to read, they can read the first half page and then they lose concentration because they've never sat and read. They've never sat and done anything that's more than a few seconds here, a few seconds there. And so we, we are breeding a generation with attention deficit. Many people do fubbing while they are among, among families, colleagues, or friends. You know that fobbing means disrespecting the person who they are sitting with by ignoring the person who is talking to us while we are using a smart tool. What are the disadvantages on the person who is doing the action of fobbing? Well, the, 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 the challenge is this. Uh, what, we, what we see in young people today is they lose the ability to interact with adults. And so uh, they come to college. And we see this every year in college. You know, come to university and what happens? They don't know how to speak to their faculty members. They don't know how to speak to somebody at the registrar's office, a secretary because they have not had any adult interaction at home. And, and because of the generation gap that exists, the young people who are immersed in this wind up being addicted to technology and they really cannot function well in an academic setting. And so what I have seen is that the students who perform best academically are students who are not tied to their devices. And so they know how to use their devices, let's be clear, but they're not tied to their devices. 
And that is critical. You want a student, you want as a, I look at hiring a professional. I want somebody who can use the tools, be very proficient at using them, but somebody who is not a slave to the tool, but, but uses the tool for whatever they need. During these days of the digital world, what would you advise parents in order to give their children a proper upbringing? That's a tough question. Uh, I, think, I think one of the key things, if you go back to what Moses had to say, teach your children. Parents need to not delegate the raising of their children to the schools. If we want our children to have values, if we want our children to have beliefs, if we want our children to grow into responsible citizens, we need to have those conversations at home. We need to model that at home. We need to teach that at home. And part of that requires that the parents not be so self-absorbed in their own jobs, in their own life, that they actually take time to spend time with their children, do things with their children, whether that is talking around the table, whether that's going out to the beach now during the summer, whatever that might be, that, that family that used to exist, and if I go back in Lebanon, not that many years ago, there was a very different lifestyle than there is today. I, I, I still remember my first visit to Lebanon back in 1975, uh, which, was, which was very different than it is today. So we need to go get to the issue of what are our values? What do we want our children to know? What do we want them to be? We know that whatever a child sees repeatedly, they absorb and they go in that direction. What are we showing them? By beholding, we become changed. Let us show our children what we want them to be. Professor Waldo Himister from California, academic dean and information technology professor, thank you so much for the information you have given us during this episode. And now we go back for our guest and from inside the studio, Ms. Tanya Shufani. Ms. Tanya Shufani, you are uh, an educator, you know, and you are a mother at the same time. So how do you think technology has impacted families? Uh, actually, uh, technology has played a crucial role in our lives on different fields. Uh, let's start by talking about field of communi communication. Uh, it has changed the way we communicate uh, through instant messaging apps and uh, different uh, social media platforms. Uh, you can't imagine, Dr. Michael, that the number of uh, uh, active web users nowadays, nowadays is about 2.3 billion, wow. which is almost half of the world's population. Wow. Amazing. And uh, more, more than this, technology has uh, facilitated our life in different uh, and several ways. Uh, doubtless, it has a positive impact on families. Uh, due, to the, due to technology now, families can uh, coordinate uh, change plans uh, through uh, uh, messages or uh, uh, calls. Okay, what are the advantages at homes when you are using technology? The advantages are uh, many. I'm going to give you some of them. Uh, first of all, you feel more comfortable at home. And uh, uh, I'm going to give you an example since I'm a teacher uh, and I'm a mother at the same time. Uh, uh, shy students will feel more comfortable to interact with their uh, teacher uh, during online classes. Uh, they won't uh, feel that stress that they suffer from in class. Uh, so this is uh, one of the most important advantages uh, that uh, uh, online uh, education has given us. Okay, I want to ask you as a mother now, 
when your children are, are using a mobile phone and not listening to you, how much this would <laughs> make you nervous? Honestly, uh, many parents complain from their children about spending many hours using their mobile phones. But how can I, as a parent, ask my child to go and practice outdoor activities while I am inside using my mobile phone? Uh, that's very clear. If you want to teach our children values, manners, behaviors, we should be good examples in front of them. So if I want them to uh, stop using uh, their phones for a long time, I have uh, to be a role model. Okay? Yes, absolutely. So, and it's very important to share activities together. It has many benefits. Yeah, like, you know, as a professor, Ronald V. Mister, when I asked him, uh, when your child asks you to buy him a smartphone or a smart tool, so what would you do? And he said, this, he said, no, don't do it. So how much this is applicable in Lebanon? I agree with him. I completely agree with him. Because many researchers have found that using uh, smart tools at certain age for children between 3 to 10 uh, will diminish their creativity. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned as a teacher and mom at the same time, I advise parents not to listen to their children and if they want to buy them something beneficial, I ask them to buy them toys or, ga or games that stimulate their intelligence or curiosity. It will be much better. You know, technology has changed the world, you know, before all Especially in Lebanon, you know, all families used to gather, watching TV, <laughs> like, you know, and some, uh, you know, adults used to gather to watch the news. Now people can get news uh, on their smartphones and they can get uh, most of the information either on Google or on YouTube. Do you think this type of technology has impacted families positively or it has dissolved family ties? As I mentioned before, technology has pros and cons on families. Uh, but the, uh, one of the negative effects that technology uh, has given or has affected families is that poor face-to-face -face <coughs> interaction. That's really Poor face-to-face -face interaction will uh, lead to lack of self-confidence. Yes, amazing. And lack of self-confidence will lead in turn to bad or weak professional uh, achievements in the future. Yeah, this is amazing because the eye contact is very important. You know, when you're talking to your son or to your daughter, you tell them, look at me while I'm talking to you because you give them uh, self-esteem. You exactly. train them to become uh, like uh, uh, trusting themselves in order to uh, accomplish many things in their lives and encounter any problem they would face. So now, uh, the WhatsApp uh, users uh, between uh, spouses or between uh, engaged couples or boyfriend or, or girlfriend, you know, sometimes people break up on WhatsApp. What do you, what do you say about like communicating via WhatsApp to those who uh, discuss subjects via WhatsApp. What would you say to them? What are the disadvantages uh, of using WhatsApp in order to discuss personal issues? Uh, regarding the subject, I say, I think it's my point of view that uh, if the bond between the couple is really strong, uh, neither WhatsApp nor Messenger uh, will be able to break uh, this uh, bond between them. Uh, so, you know, uh, now we are using uh, smart tools at schools and we are giving uh, some students uh, lessons on, on their computer on their, or on their, uh, on their uh, tablet. So do you think it's effective more than doing the homework on the copybook? Online education is the newest and the most popular form of distance learning nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes place over the internet. 
the student ha should have an access to a computer and internet at the same time. And uh, here, actually, we're not only in Lebanon, due to the crisis of COVID-19, schools have started to follow a new system of teaching, which is online teaching. But unfortunately, there, there was a disaster. Why? Why? Because neither students nor teachers haven't been prepared to such type of teaching and uh, you learning. Mean, you mean in Lebanon? Uh, you mean in yeah, Lebanon? in Lebanon, yeah. actually. Teachers are not prepared. Teachers are not Students prepared. Students are not prepared. And what about the system, the internet connection? About the in uh, that's more. The internet connection is not uh, accessible everywhere. And uh, about we, have, we suffer also from uh, a problem of electricity. Uh, so uh, I think it's not fair to use it uh, nowadays. Especially in, in Lebanon, especially in Lebanon. Okay, but you know, uh, the Ministry of Education uh, during co uh, COVID-19 uh, forced the schools to teach their students uh, online. So the schools had no choice but to teach online. So uh, can you tell us about online teaching more? Th they tried. I think they tried to do their better. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we can't consider it a successful experiment. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, when we talk about online education for young children aged uh, those who are in elementary classes or KG classes. Because here the role of the parent, I think, is triple the role of the teacher. Mm -hmm. And so we all know that some parents are, will be busy. Uh, they, they don't uh, spend uh, much time with their uh, uh, children at home uh, due to their... Uh, uh, maybe they have, uh, they work outside. Most of them work outside, so they don't have time to sit next to their child and re-explain for them the lesson. So I think that online education can be efficient with uh, complementary students and above, while it shouldn't be applied uh, on children uh, who are in elementary classes and below. You know, uh Technology has offered us many things. So like we have uh, smart tools that we can use in our businesses, it facilitates our businesses, and it helps us to carry on. And uh, for example, if you want to uh, establish a business outside your country uh, with the technology, uh, you, can, you can do that. And you can monitor your business uh, from another country, you know, using cams uh, and all the smart uh, stuff. Now, you know, uh, distance learning is something uh, not new to the world. For example, Harvard, Harvard University uh, has started uh, this eight years uh, ago, and uh, Illinois University has already started uh, online education. So when, when we started uh, teaching uh, the children uh, online, like, for example, the four years old children to 10 years old children or the three years old children, sometimes they did it in Lebanon. Do you think that these children uh, could sit for like uh, three hours or four hours watching class online in comparison with university students? Uh, psychological, no. And as I said before, uh, uh, these many researches have been done on uh, spending hours on screens for young children and uh, the results were uh, completely negative. Uh, we can't oblige a three-year-old child to sit in front of a screen uh, without moving or uh, uh, mm -hmm. having his, his own freedom. Uh, it's completely different from the class. In, in the class he will have his own space but uh, uh, at home while online uh, teaching, uh, for example, if he moves for a little bit, he will miss an information. And uh, how will he compensate this? Mm -hmm. So in a class, the teacher will may repeat and repeat and uh, uh, sit next to the child, especially for those who suffer from a weakness in certain subjects. So I think it's completely uh, difficult to do that with the uh, children 
uh, in elementary classes and kgs you know there is a very important question that goes in mind uh, you know in the west and after they made the finnish approach of education and how they uh, worked on the talent of the student they said that the best teacher for the child is his her mom so that's why uh, they forced the government's force uh, for schools to bring female teachers to teach kids why because uh, females have the instinct of a mother even if they are not married and they don't have kids so now the mothers are taking the role of the teachers or cooperating with the teacher while online education so why do you think uh, it is an obstacle is it because they sit for a long time and they get bored and kids want to play or uh, for other reason uh, one of the reasons is that the, the one that you mentioned it's uh, hard for uh, a young child to sit for two or three consecutive hours in front of the screen another obstacle is that not all mothers are educated mm -hmm. so how can they uh, support or scaffold their children at home you know in case we're going to carry on with COVID-19 uh, and we will go more for online education what would you advise mothers to do while their children are at home like as a mother you're a mother now so what would you do if this uh, will occur again uh, what can I do with them is that uh, I will keep encouraging them uh, to learn uh, either online or uh, in another way uh, we, since we all know that uh, due to technology uh, you can be self self learner if you have the will you can be a self learner you can uh, search uh, for any topic, you can learn new skills through navigating uh, certain websites. So uh, I will, uh, what I'm going to do is the following, is encouraging them uh, to study, to learn, and uh, at the same time, I will not uh, prevent them from doing their activities uh, outside because uh, they are, to me, they are very important. Yes, because the, kid, the kids need the space, they want to play, they want to, uh, exactly. They want to explore they their need energies. To express themselves yes. using their body. <laughs> yes, and then they can they can study better. You have mentioned that we don't have internet connection, a very good internet connection in Lebanon, and teachers are not well trained to teach online, as well as the parents, the mothers, and the 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 new generation is not well trained, as uh, as kids. We, we were saying. Uh, that they are not uh, accustomed to this. If you want to uh, to say something uh, to the Lebanese Minister of Education, what would you request in that case? I want to uh, I want to ask him to start. Uh, you mean the Minister of Education? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, I want him to start uh, uh, certain sessions for both teachers. First, we have to start by teachers. Sure. Uh, in order uh, to be well prepared to face uh, the problem which hasn't been finished yet. And uh, also, uh, what I want from him is, uh, uh, it's an obligatory now, to have access for internet for the whole students in every space in Lebanon. Yes, you know, uh, what I want to ask you as a mother, during the time of COVID-19, uh, you know, you're a teacher, while other mothers are not teachers. So what do you think uh, you had the main obstacles while using technology? For instance, you know, sometimes kids, if you put them online, they minimize the screen and they watch YouTube, they watch cartoons instead. So what, what, what are uh, the obstacles you had to manage for, like, you have uh, two or three kids, I remember. Yeah. Uh, more, more than this, Dr. Michael, the, the main obstacle uh, that uh, many families have faced during this problem is that talking about big families, those who have, for example, three or four children, and those three or four children have online uh, courses at the same time. 
So how will the father or the mother manage it? They need four smart tools and they need a quick access to internet. So this is the main problem that we suffered from Lebanon and, and Lebanon. In Lebanon. Okay, I want to ask you now a question for you as uh, a teacher. Okay, if you were the Minister of Education and the decision was in your hand, okay, or is in your hand, would you uh, carry on with online education for uh, children who are between 4 and 12 years old? If yes, tell us why. Or if no, tell us why. First of all, before we start talking about all of these, we have to say that our curriculum hasn't been renewed since 1997. And this is the big problem. Now we are in 2020, and we have been using curriculum, an old one. So how can I adopt online teaching and our curriculum cannot be, uh, cannot support online teaching? We cannot, we cannot use it. So first of all, we have to uh, renew our curriculum and we have to include or eliminate maybe new subjects, add new subjects or eliminate certain subjects uh, which uh, uh, students considered as loads on them. Our Lebanese curriculum is really so heavy comparing to other curriculums. That's really good and thank you so much for uh, the information you have given us during uh, this time. I want to ask you uh, what is your opinion and what is your advice to every mother and father who, who are using technology at homes? Technology is a weapon with two ends. Wow. So, uh, nowadays we cannot get rid of it, but we have to know how to use it. Okay, so, uh, and as I said, we are role models to our children. Please, if you want them to be uh, good people in the future, we have to show them that we are good people. If we want them uh, to behave well, we should behave well in front of them. Uh, please, don't waste lots of time uh, on uh, smart tools. Uh, your family, is the most precious thing that God has given you. Ms. Tanya Shofani, thank you for your time and uh, thank you for the information you have given us as a teacher and as a mother. Thank you for watching us. Thank you so much and be aware that technology is used only for your need, not all the time. Thank you so much.